Put on your favorite Blood Death album and sacrifice yourself to appease your deadbeat dad because we have American Gods Season 3 and there is a lot to talk about. In this video we'll be going into detail about the final episode including some huge reveals you may have missed, including who Shadow Moon really is, Odin colluding with Mr. World, and what Destiny has in store for Laura and Shadow. So grab your lucky coins and make sure to like and subscribe because here we go. Go. We start with Eugenia, the woman who midwifed Shadow Moon. She has two coins in her eyes, suggesting she has passed on. My time on this earth is done. We learned in episode 7 that she's been a handful since she got sick, and we see her taunting the Yoruba god of death, Aiku. We'll see Aiku in this clip wearing a robe bearing his name, and on the back, Death Tour 2020. He takes a staff out of the fridge, which is the traditional staff Aiku was known to carry. Also, I'm known in my videos for getting pronunciations wrong, so apologies in advance if I do that. Eugenia tells an odd story of a hen that always laid an egg with two yolks, a metaphor for Shadow and his soulmate being born as one but separated. Bilquis is tasked with finding Shadow's other half as we see imagery of Shadow and Laura merging as one. Bilquis has been on her own journey this season, finding out who she really is. As we'll find out later, gods can forget who they really are. Sometimes this is caused by their worshippers shifting the god to their will. They create an identity, an image for us that serves them. They teach us to see ourselves through a veil. She tells Shadow to smash that veil, hinting that he is blinded and does not know his true identity. Other gods, like Technical Boy, are also not sure of who they really are. As Mr. World tells him later on, every time Technical Boy evolves, he essentially loses the memory of his former version. His memories are actually stored in a totem called Artifact Number 1, which Mr. World controls and keeps hidden two miles underground. I believe this item here, Artifact number one is a piece of flint, signifying man's first step toward technology, the creation of fire. We'll later see flashes of these giant technological shifts where Tech Boy evolved, such as the printing press, light bulb, and nuclear bomb. What I'm getting at here is that there may be gods out there who don't know that they are gods, like Shadow Moon, Laura, and Cordelia. Welcome to the center of America Motel, a place where gods can't harm one another, as we see when Chernabog tries to hit Mr. World with his mouth. You'll notice Shadow asks Ibis why Wednesday and Mr. World didn't have their peace talks here. That's because Wednesday knew he was going to be killed. It was all part of his plan. In episode 6, we see Mr. World portrayed here by actor Danny Trejo talking to someone on the phone asking what they should do about Laura. I believe Mr. World here is talking to Wednesday, setting up his own assassination so he can eventually evolve into a greater god. It is Mr. World, after all, who tells Laura where Wednesday will be. If the peace talks took place at the motel here, Laura wouldn't be able to kill him. Now you might be asking yourself, why would Mr. World be colluding with Wednesday? Haven't they been fighting for the past three seasons? Well, as it's heavily implied in the final episode, Mr. World is the Norse god Loki, the trickster who feeds off chaos to become more powerful. And what better way to sow chaos than pitting the gods against one another? So Loki here is just doing what's in his best interest. By helping Wednesday, he ensures greater chaos for the future. Part of his trickster ways include being able to shapeshift, as we see with actors Danny Trejo and Dominique Jackson. He also tricks Technical Boy, who he claims is arguably the most powerful god, into being imprisoned in his underground vault. Part of Technical Boy's power stems from the fact that he is the embodiment of human innovation, making him the bridge between the old gods and the new. This interaction between Mr. World and Technical Boy is a callback to episode 5 at the Chicago Expo of 1893, in which we we see a young technical boy tricked by Maximilian the Illusionist, who is really Mr. World, and what better profession for this con man than a magician? Shadow remarks that Wednesday's ravens are with him now, before Cordelia arrives and tells him that it was Laura who killed his father. It's been kind of an enigma as to what Cordelia's real identity is. The relationship she has with Wednesday is akin to a father-daughter more than anything, however there are clues to suggest she is the goddess Frigg, Odin's wife. This radiant is my fiance. 
Cordelia. She also wears a pussy hat as symbol of femininity, and some also argue that of caring, compassion, and love. And I'd also say Cordelia is one of the most caring characters this season, even choosing to see the good in Wednesday when others won't. There's even a moment Wednesday refers to Cordelia as, quote, my girl Friday. And the word Friday is derived from the goddess Frigg. This now makes four characters named after days of the week, if you also include Shadow Moon for Monday and Tyr for Tuesday. As Chernobog bangs the receptionist, Laura escapes through the ventilation shaft and sees Shadow. He's having a dream of his father asking for help. Along with him are the slaves we saw at the beginning of episode 4. This could also be a metaphor for the potential threat the New Gods Shard program will have on humanity, turning everyone into slaves. The Shard program would allow the gods the ability to create a digital pipeline into every cerebral cortex on the planet. Whoever is in control of it would wield unimaginable power. Over the dead body of Wednesday, Mr. World tells Shadow that he had no part in Wednesday's death. He doesn't want to spark a war, but we know he secretly does. It's Laura who lets everything out of the bag. How else did she get the coin to retrieve Odin's spear? How did she know where Wednesday was going to be so she could kill him? She couldn't have done it without help. Of course this doesn't matter because by the time the old gods would get their armies all gathered, Shard will be completed and the old gods will be forgotten. As is Norse tradition, it is up to the son to avenge a father's death, meaning Shadow is expected to kill Laura. This is something he doesn't end up doing, choosing to be a new leader, one that is better than his father, a leader of change. Later, when we see him strung up on the world tree Yggdrasil, he has visions of slaves picking cotton, looking up to him. If I were to hazard a guess, Shadow will become the god of change or hope. This makes even more sense considering the show was written against the backdrop of the 2019 presidential election, the BLM movement, and various social issues dividing America today. As stated earlier, gods can morph and change as time goes on. If that's the case, and if Shadow were a god, who did he derive from? Well, we know he's Odin's son, and the prevailing theory out there is that he is Baldr, the god of light, joy, purity, and the summer sun. The Requiem of Baldr is also the name of the song both Laura and Mr. World hum. Do you know what this song is? It's like, ba 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 Who the fuck are you? So Shadow believes he has this destiny and decides to undergo the vigil to look after his father for nine days and nine nights, a feat of endurance mortals would die from and even gods can barely endure. Meanwhile, Laura experiences a prophetic vision of Shadow killed by Odin's spear, a hint of what's to come. This is followed by her visited by Bilquis both in person and in a dream. In this dream, they kiss and knowing Bilquis's power of love, she's probably putting some sort of spell on her. This is the last we see of these two for the season, so whatever Bilquis is doing here is setting us up for something involving Laura and Shadow's destiny. As the vigil for Wednesday begins, Shadow is approached by the three Norns, women who tend to the world tree. Also, I should mention that Chernobog is uber pissed that Shadow didn't avenge Wednesday by killing Laura, and this will undoubtedly be a point of contention in season 4, considering he even says he'll kill Shadow for it. Shadow is washed with what the Norns call the hot water of time, washing away his past and preparing him for his future a not-so-subtle nod that he'll be evolving into something new. And it's a hard day of work for these actresses who have to rub Ricky Whittle in oils. Meanwhile, at Mr. World's headquarters, Technical Boy has gone mad in his search for artifact number one. He's even taken to consuming raw data. He was told that this artifact would help restore him and stop him from glitching, a glitch which occurred way back in episode one when he touched Bilquis. We'll later see Technical Boy haunted by Bilquis, or rather a manifestation of his own subconscious. Technical Boy says that's impossible, he doesn't have a subconscious, he's technology after all. But this subconscious tells him that the only way to overcome this glitch is for him to embrace his emotions. This evolution of Technical Boy could be pointing to the fact that technology will one day get to the point where robots and AI have realistic emotional responses, just like humans. So it makes sense that Technical Boy will reach that point as well. As Shadow undertakes the vigil, he experiences several visions and voices, Soraya telling him to follow the night 
night sky when he can't find his way, the Yoruba god Yomoja saying that they've been awaiting his arrival, and Laura telling him he's going to die. We also get this flaming bison buffalo who apparently is important in the book, but has just kind of been this unknown eye candy figure for three seasons. Shadow awakes on a plane across from Wednesday, a callback to the first time he met Wednesday back in season one. He says they're currently in a place between the living and the dead, and Shadow learns the harsh truth that this was all part of Wednesday's plan, for his own son to sacrifice himself for him. A blood sacrifice by a son? Wow. That's powerful enough to restore me to all my former glory. Wednesday needed a martyr to return him to his former glory, and what better person than his own son? It makes sense. Almost every character on the show has said the same thing about Wednesday, that he only does things in his own self-interest. Just before his death, Tyr even tried to warn Shadow, The death I give you will be a mercy compared to your father. <laughs> So does this mean that Shadow is dead? Absolutely not. We've already seen multiple characters come back from the dead, including Laura, who's come back twice. And with all this talk of destiny, it's clear Shadow has a much larger role to play. But it looks like Wednesday will be returning in a far more powerful form. We see the shroud covering his body blow into the wind where his body has disappeared. Plus these large storm clouds in the distance heralding his arrival and perhaps Ragnarok. Ibis, after all, remarks that this could be the beginning of something much worse. Shadow's death mimics what happens to Baldur in Norse mythology. Loki is instrumental in Baldur's death just as Mr. World is to Shadow's. Plus, Baldur's wife, aka Laura, is instrumental in resurrecting him, something we'll likely see in Season 4. Baldur's death is also considered a harbinger for Ragnarok. So these are some pretty big clues as to who Shadow really is and where the show is headed. But what did you guys think of the season? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, everyone. For more bad takes, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Daddy loves you very much.